Hey guys, Vladimir here with Best Top Makes and I wanted to show you what I ended up doing with my twisty container automation uh, contraption here. Um, before that, I, I have to confess that I kind of did get a little out of hand with these. I just couldn't stop designing and printing these. So I tried a whole bunch of different shapes and different twists and colors. And there's just so much fun to play with. So uh, I encourage you, um, if you haven't seen um, the tutorial on how to design these, uh, go ahead and check it out so you can uh, see how to make your own. Now this seemed like the perfect project to go ahead and automate. So that's where this comes in. And I'll just plug it in and, and show you how it works. Um, and then I'll actually explain uh, what I did. So this is just one of those five volt um, battery power supplies. Um, that you usually use to charge your phone. So I'm gonna just plug this in with a USB. So that's basically it. It just does that all day. And um, I get two types of reactions to this project. Uh, one is, uh, what's the point? And the second one is, whoa, that's really cool. So you probably fall into one of those categories. Um, but as far as what I did here is, I first constructed the frame using the open beam aluminum extrusion sets that you can get. And these things are great because it just provides a quick way to just go ahead and um, you know build a prototype of something if it's a frame of something you need. Um, so I did that first and then I attached a servo motor. This is a continuous rotation servo motor and onto the servo motor I designed this little pulley that I 3D printed and attached to it. And then I have a string or just a little rope tied to um, a magnet. And I also designed this little casing for the magnet. Um, so the magnet just kind of is friction fit in there and it's got a little hole into the design so I could thread the rope and just tie it there. And so once the servo motor turns uh, the pulley here and this gets close to the, the um, the twist container, it'll just snap right into it. And the reason it does that is because in the inside, I glued a little uh, M3 nut in there. Um, I just hot glued it there, and so that provides it uh, with a metal object to go ahead and snap to. Uh, let's see, the frame here is just a piece of acrylic that I just scored and um, just basically snapped it and attached it to the frame here with just some foam tape. And let's see, the servo motor is then attached um, to an Arduino. And the connection is really straightforward. All you're doing is attaching um, just three wires, your power, your ground, and your signal. Um, and then I just attached the Arduino with foam tape onto the frame here. I was really just trying to keep this build as simple as possible. Um, let's see, what else am I forgetting here? Uh, of course I have some zip ties. And oh, I also designed this little um, uh, sort of cylindrical uh, um, shape here. And what that does is just keeps the um, the twist container in place so as it picks it up uh, or as it picks up this part it doesn't slide around um, and let me get that. put that back uh, okay so the final thing would really be the code the arduino code and i'll briefly go over it because it's really simple it's just a few lines of code um, so what I did here was you want to include the a servo library and in the setup you just uh, you want to attach it to a certain pin so here I have it plugged into pin 9 
So I'm just saying that I attached it to that pin. And the way the servo without write command works is uh, if you set it to um, 90 degrees, or if you give it a value of 90, it's going to stay still. And I, I should say this is how it's going to react to a continuous rotation servo. So a value of 90, it shouldn't move. However, I found that my servo did move. And um, so what you do is you just grab a little screwdriver and you turn this little, um, this little uh, screw here at, on your servo motor. And you just find, um, just really uh, fine tune it, just slight movements to get it to where it then stays still. So once it's still, um, you know, it's not moving anymore, that's where you wanna be. And then so anything above 90, any value from basically zero to 180, anything above 90 will have the servo move one way, uh, which the farther you are from 90, the faster it's supposed to rotate. So uh, 180 will rotate in one direction full speed, zero will rotate in the other direction in full speed. Um, so what I have here is just basically just 10 value off of 90. So I go uh, one direction, I give it 80. And then the other direction, I gave it a 100. And then the delay is just basically I figured out um, how many rotations I wanted it to make and then figured out how many seconds it took to make those rotations. So in this case, I'm dealing with milliseconds. So I gave it... Uh, you know, 7,400 milliseconds one way. And then the other way I gave it 7,500 just because I noticed that it did travel a little faster one way uh, rather than the other. So you'll have to play around with those numbers and tweak it uh, to uh, to be able to get it to, um, to work. Uh, I kept it simple, like I said, I could have been more precise and used maybe some sort of sensors to read the positioning. Um, but, you know, the delay here worked for me. So that's what I did. Um, so that's basically it. Um, you guys, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I love doing stuff like this where I get to combine my 3D prints with some electronics and throw some motors on there and get it to do something. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If you do like projects like these, uh, make sure to subscribe uh, because I'm gonna be planning to do a, a lot more of these as well uh, where I show my fusion designs, print them, and then go ahead and try to do something else with them. So. Uh, all right, guys. Take care.